What I'm here to talk to you about this morning and what we're going to be sharing with you and hopefully speaking with you as opposed to at you is the fine art of maximizing your personal presence and personal relationship skills to make a difference in this business. Check it out. Last night for the awards, the songs that were given awards, there were probably 50 or 60 songs that were given awards. Do you know how many of those songs were written by one writer? None. All of those songs had more than one writer. Some of those songs had amazing numbers of writers, right? Thought being that as songwriters and people in the songwriting world in this moment of the music business, which is different than any moment of the music business that has been obviously up until now, it's really important to connect yourselves with other people who share the aspirations and the energy and the creative power that you have in order to maximize your career as a songwriter. So that's one of the things that I was so aware of last night. I was also very aware of the energy that people like Quincy Jones or Wycliffe Jean or Natasha Bedingfield give off and the kind of vibe that they have. Three years ago, I was here and I interviewed Melissa Etheridge. Do you guys know Melissa? You know, know her work, right? Duh. Uh -huh. I later on interviewed her for my book, Electrify My Soul, Songwriters and the Spiritual Source. And with Melissa Etheridge, I've never had this happen before where she emits such a physical energy that in interviewing her, they had to keep like grabbing my belt and pulling me out of the shot. You know, I was drawn into her orbit like she was a giant lesbian son, you know? <laughs> I just wanted to get close to that energy, and that's the energy that we want to talk to you guys about, because you all have that energy. I have that energy, you have that energy, we just need to figure out ways to focus it and make sure other people get what we got going on, okay? As always in a networking seminar, and this took me a long time to get this concept together, the people that really need this information aren't here. <laughs> They're, they're what we call back in the business, they're, they're too hip for the room. They're like, I don't need to know all that stuff. I already got that going on, you know. And it's always interesting to me, sometimes the people that feel that they are the strongest in networking are actually the most off-putting, you know what I mean? Because networking is not about you. Networking is about the other person and making the other person respond to you in a way that's effective, okay? So if, if you come in and you've got all sorts of weird stuff and energy around you and you're blowing hype in this direction, blowing hype in that direction, blah, 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 I, 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 no, 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 no. So what we're going to talk about today are how to get people focused on what you've got going on. So there you go. Uh, already I see people that are doing things that I like, and that is allowing other people to begin conversations with them based on something they're wearing. Okay, a tchotchke, okay. the team jersey, your shoelaces, your socks. I had to stop myself. I would have looked like a Christmas tree this morning to make that point. But people are generally shy, especially in a conference situation. A lot of people get here and it's overwhelming to them, is it not? There's too many things going on out there. There are too many opportunities. There are too many people. We tend to look at those other people and think they got a lot more going on than we do. And the truth is that they don't. Everybody is just as shy. Y'all songwriters, everybody is just as neurotic. <laughs> hey, and I'm a reformed songwriter, and there was nobody that had the level of neurosis to it that I did, let me tell you. So that's how I know that, all right? So everybody just comes from the same place. And the good thing about maximizing a concert or a conference environment like this is that everybody's here because they're accessible to you. And the most valuable relationships that you will create over these three days will not be with the industry. It will not be with Wycliffe Jean, I guarantee you. It will be with the other people who are here, who are on the level you are, and you connect to their aspirations and to their energies, and you network for the future, okay? It ain't what's happening right now. This is not an instant world. This is not instant coffee. I know we live in an instant culture, but networking, takes place over a period of time. I see people here that I've seen at other events. I like that, I like that guys. I've seen you at other events, I like that. Other places we've seen each other. First time I meet you, you make an impression on me, I get it. 
Second time you meet me, you make, a more, you make a further impression. By the third time, we're old friends. Now, one thing that happens to me at conferences, and I would, I would tell you this right off the bat, this is, this is freaky. I might see somebody, because I do a lot of conferences, I might see somebody across the room that I recognize, and our eyes meet. It's like, it's, it's a moment, you know what I'm saying? It's one of those moments. They see me, I see them. The connection is made. They look at me, I look at them. And we're running toward each other in slow motion, just like one of those, t- you know, tacky soap commercials, you know what I mean? And I get up there, and the first thing they say to me is, Dan, you probably don't remember me, but... Oh. Okay, they've said two things to me. Number one, they've said that I have so few brain cells left that I can't retain that kind of information. (laughs) They've also told me that they know what I know and what I don't know, and they've also told me that they are so insignificant that I wouldn't remember them. All right? What you always want to do is help people remember you. And so I do it probably to the extreme people I've known for years. I still always reintroduce myself. Say, you know, Bob, Dan Kimpel, we met at the ASCAP Pop Awards. They may or may not remember me, but they probably will act like they do. And you help people, and you establish a comfort zone, okay? Now, this is, this is before we even hear any music. This is before we even hear any songs. This is just relating to people as people, because first you have to establish who you are as a person before anybody takes you seriously as a songwriter, okay? Positive energy attracts positive energy, all right? Upbeat, happy people that look like they are enjoying this life are going to attract happy, upbeat people who look like they're enjoying this life. So it's a huge thing. I always want people to have the thing. Now, check this out. There's an old saying, which is, must be present to win. Um, Have you noticed that nobody really looks cute when they're looking at a cell phone? Right? When somebody's like, right? Nobody, you don't want to, you don't want to like, you know, I mean, it's just, so when you're at this event, I would encourage you to minimize the amount of time that you're communicating with people who are not here, okay? Because they're not here, all right? And when you're staring at that cell phone or that iPhone or you're Twittering and you're you're just told 75,000 people you've gone to the men's room, (laughs) you know, you might miss an opportunity to catch somebody's eye. And if you don't catch their eye, you may never collaborate. And if you never collaborate, you may never get a cut. And if you never get a cut, you may never have Natasha Bedingfield on this stage singing it. You know what I'm saying? You only know in reverse what's working for you. You don't know going in. And that's where the faith that we have as songwriters, and songwriters know about faith, right, Mark? You know about that. You know that that's going to have to impact you, right? Are you guys logical people? No. No. If you were logical people, you probably wouldn't be here in my presence. And that's good. I'm not a logical person either. I just say yes to everything, you know? As creative people, we wake up with our abilities in the morning. As creative people, we wake up and look in the mirror and you're there. You were there yesterday, you're there today. You can write songs, you can make rhymes, you can make things happen musically. And we take that for granted. A lot of times as creative people or as songwriters, we take that for granted. Sometimes it takes somebody outside of us to be able to tell us what it is we can do. Now, I'm a strong believer that we can't make anything happen in our careers as much as we would like to think we can. We cannot. We can only put ourselves in a position where things will happen for us. We want to use this as an opportunity to realize that people do business with people that seem to be on their level. And effective networking has to benefit both parties. And it has to benefit both parties in a similar way. So think about what it is you have that would make somebody want to work with you and let them know and be able to communicate. Now, I'm a strong proponent of what I call an elevator pitch. And that is... Who are you and why are you here? 
Because people are going to judge you. I told you before, 20 seconds, people are going to make a judgment based on the way you look and the way you communicate. It's 20 seconds. It's fast. Okay?